When it comes to sports, the city of Brampton has a rich history. In 2008, the Brampton Excelsiors Major Series Lacrosse team celebrated their 125th anniversary with their ninth Man Cup Championship. The city's two Junior A hockey teams, the Capitals and the Blues, have won a number of league titles, while the Brampton Curling Club remains a staple in the community since 1951. So it would come as no surprise that a major junior hockey franchise would be a perfect fit for one of Canada's fastest growing cities. On December 3, 1996, the Ontario Hockey League granted Brampton an expansion franchise. The team would begin play in the 1998-99 season. That's got to be a huge moment uh, for not only the city of Brampton, but certainly for the whole organization to be able to be welcomed into the OHL fraternity. A huge moment not just for Brampton, but for the whole region of Peel, getting two franchises at the same time, seven kilometers apart down the road. Uh, an absolute huge moment for this region and the rivalry that built up over the years to come. The battalion was purchased by Scott Abbott, the original owner of the Metro Junior A Caledon Canadians, a team that went on to win two league titles and an OHA championship in only seven seasons of existence. Abbott gained international acclaim in 1979 when he became the co-inventor of the Trivial Pursuit board game. Certainly there is a learning curve to, uh, to go through at the ownership level and uh, I guess I have a better appreciation now of of what it means to uh, actually operate a team and uh, I guess a better appreciation of the degree uh, to which hockey politics are involved in hockey. In August of 1997, Stan Butler was appointed head coach and general manager of the battalion. Butler's resume included two successful seasons behind the bench with the OHL's Oshawa Generals from 1994 to 96 followed by a one-year stop with the WHL's Prince George Cougars. You know, we've been together since day one. I mean, it's funny sitting in these stands here. I can remember him and I standing on the other side of the rink looking at a dirt pile in the middle here, which was going to be the rink. So, um, you know, we've been together a long time, and I don't consider him just an owner. I consider him a friend. The one and only head coach in battalion history and has uh, done an, an exemplary job building this club and rebuilding it over the years. You can see by the number of players that have gone on to the NHL and had great careers. One of the hallmarks of Stan Butler is quality kids that he brings into the organization. Just months after Brampton was awarded a franchise, the city of Mississauga was granted an expansion team with Don Cherry leading the bid. As a result, OHL Commissioner David Branch announced in January 1998 that the league's divisions would be realigned for the 98-99 season. The battalion were placed in the Western Conference's Midwest Division. On June 4th, 1998, just two days prior to the OHL priority selection, the league held an expansion draft. Among the eight players chosen by Brampton was Jason Maleko, a defenseman that would captain the battalion for their first three seasons in the OHL. Uh, Jason Maleko, the first captain of the battalion, and again, one of those true heart and soul kind of guys, uh, was a solid two-way player for the battalion. Jason Maleko was a great captain. I think was a quality choice. He was a stand-up guy, a very classy guy. On June 5th, the team unveiled their jersey in team colors. And the next day, Scott Abbott and Stan Butler announced the first draft pick in Brampton Battalion history. Brampton Battalion is pleased and proud to select from the Ottawa Legionnaires I knew I was going to go high, uh, and I was within the top three, which were going to be selected first, so I didn't know for sure that I was going to be selected first, so that made it a little better, a little more uh, exciting. That was, big, that was a big moment for the battalion to get Jay Harrison number one overall, because obviously it was their very first draft, and it was an excellent draft choice. I think that uh, they could have made uh, some mistakes with that number one overall, but Jay Harrison was a solid pick and uh, had a great career with the battalion. I come in and I uh, took a role as a leader. I wanted to make sure I get my leadership qualities down for the future because this is a young team and uh, we're going to be really good in the future. And uh, I was rewarded with my uh, leadership with an assistant captain this year. He has great intangibles in terms of his leadership. He leads by example. Uh, he's not afraid to speak out in the room. Um, and he's certainly one of the most intense players I've ever been around. Probably the best defensive defenseman the battalion have ever had. Um, sure wish he'd get a shot in the NHL because he certainly could make his mark there. I think Jay Harrison is one of the true nice guys too that the battalion have ever had. The 98 draft proved to be a fruitful one for the battalion as Butler was able to steal future NHLer Rafi Torres in the sixth round. 
Frampton entered the 98-99 season as the youngest team in the OHL. And there was no one younger in the league than 15-year-old Jason Spezza. Spezza joined the club as a training camp invitee and was given permission to play as an underager with the battalion because his family resided in Brampton. I think I'd bring some offensive flash and uh, a bit of leadership. Well, that year, I think you can go back to it, and uh, when Spezza was here, I think you can remember that uh, a lot of people were pretty excited about the team, and they knew that uh, that was one of the times when you came to the rink and you really were seeing somebody who was going to be a, an impact player in the NHL in the, in the not-too-distant future. And uh, when Spezza was here and accomplished those things as a rookie, he pretty much lived up to the hype. I feel very comfortable here playing. That's why I made the decision to come up. And I think we have a good team. There's a good bunch of guys, and we work really hard. Jason Maleko scored the first ever goal for the battalion, who opened their first OHL campaign with two road losses. Then on October 9th, they played the first ever game at the Brampton Center in front of 4,800 fans. Spezza scored the lone goal for Brampton as they dropped a 5-1 decision to the Kitchener Rangers. That first ever game at home was electrifying here in this building. Uh, it just opened up the building a couple of weeks earlier and it was absolutely spectacular to watch the fans in the Peel region embrace OHL hockey. Days later, the battalion picked up their first win in franchise history as Kurt McSwain scored the game-winning goal in a 5-4 victory over the Sudbury Wolves. The wins were hard to come by in that first year, um, and getting that first win was a huge lift to this team that these kids belong here and can certainly compete with the best in the OHL. Uh, I think, obviously, uh, they, they had a pretty successful year being a, a first-year franchise. They had a lot of high-quality talent. I think that uh, they were definitely uh, stepping in the right direction that first year. Obviously, getting that first win under the belt was, was a big step. Wins would not come easy for the troops in their first year as they managed to record only eight victories and three ties in 68 games. We'll take our lumps now, and I think the way that we play our kids, we're going to give lots of young guys tons of ice time. And that experience and, and uh, some of the harder knocks we take in the first half of this year will make winning that much more enjoyable and that much more fun down the road. One of the highlights of the season was an 8-1 win over their crosstown rival Mississauga Ice Dogs. Jason Spetz and Rafi Torres each had two goals and an assist in the game as the battalion fired 72 shots on net. Torres led the troops with 35 goals in their inaugural campaign, earning him a place on the OHL's second all-rookie team. Meanwhile, Spezza netted a team-high 49 assists and 71 points, and he joined teammate Jay Harrison on the league's first all-rookie team. When the season ended, Jason Spezza was required to go back into the draft pool. In June 1999, the battalion played host to the OHL priority selection in front of a full house at the Brampton Center. The Mississauga Ice Dogs held the first overall pick in the draft, and they made no mystery as to what player they wanted. On behalf of the Mississauga Ice Dogs, I'm proud to select as the first player taken in this year's draft from the Brampton Battalion, Mississauga native, Jason Spezza. Well, uh, it was worth it all last year. I think it was worth it all last year. We took an awful lot of abuse last year. Uh, we had four wins. We had a lot of people say a lot of things about us, but it was worth it when I heard of uh, Spezza, number one, Mississauga. So it's... Uh, Great day, this kid is unbelievable. One like him comes along every 10 years. I think the last one was uh, Eric Lindros, and I guarantee you he'll be the number one draft in the National Hockey League 2001. I'd also be remiss if I didn't give special thanks to Mr. Abbott, Coach Butler, and all the players of the Brampton Battalion for allowing me to close this debate for people this year. Without the support and experience I gained from Brampton, this day could not have happened. You know, I, I saw him. I saw him do things last year. I didn't see too many guys do when he was only 15. Imagine what he's going to be like when he's 18. 